Howdy folks, this is Jackers back again with another episode of Morris Goes to Oblivion, this time with episode 117, and we are here in the formerly undead-filled caverns beneath the Imperial Palace, and uh, I will turn it over now to Morris the High Elf. Yes, well, it is always better to hand it over to a professional, isn't it? And, of course, when last we met, Dee Dee had been doing a marvelous job of eliminating the former residents. Well, I imagine it's the second time they've been eliminated. All of that being said, we are in need of going that away. So it looks like we go forward a bit and down here. Dee Dee is ready to roll. In our spell book, I hear a skeleton rattling around the, the corner. There you are, darling. Have fun. I will switch back to our glass mace. Should we get the chance, we can give Dee Dee a bit of a... Did you just smack Dee Dee? Darling, you feel free to hit it as hard as you want. Oh, look at that. We're getting better at sneaking. Well, mainly because the skeletons aren't the sharpest sword in the sheath. All right, that's one down, darling. A bit of help for you. Yes, I don't think she liked being hit quite that much. I mean, she can be playful, but they were being a bit unreasonable. That's better, darling. They fell apart just the way you like. Bone meal. The other one had a silver mace. What did you have? A silver battle axe. And in the chests, we have a strong potion of healing. That will come in handy. And another strong potion of healing, and another of strong potion of sorcery. Keeping an eye on our surroundings, and of course, a ghost in the distance. Well, I suppose we could go with a silver battle axe. Was that a battle axe back there, or a war axe? Just the difference between one-handed and two, but... Battle axe, so same thing. All right. Well... I do hear something else off-gassing in the neighborhood. I don't think it's this one. There's a zombie, a headless. Oh, Dee Dee just loves all the playmates here. I can tell by the way she shakes, shudders, and then slashes them to pieces. Well done, darling. And yes, you do still have time to play with the ghost. Ah, I do believe we have some magical weaponry out there. Let's get Dee Dee up again. I don't know if they will go after her, but I'm fairly certain if we step out of there, they will be interested in us. Let's switch to our glass maze, which just takes up a little less real estate on our view. Yes, darling, you saunter back magnificently. All right, we are going to press the space-time key. For whatever reason, I don't know, in the past, well, my past, the future of Skyrim, we could disarm these, but it does not look to be something we are capable of here. That button or that button, I don't know, honestly, if we can trigger those with, say, a shot. Actually, before... Let's switch to 
something other than a silver arrow to do that. And certainly not glass. How about the arrow of extrication? Uh, dwarven will do nicely. Let's see if I can make that shot. A little too high. A little too high still, possibly. Does not appear to be so. Now, I don't know that we have telekinesis. And I don't know that it would work either at that distance or at all, honestly. I haven't really, well, used it very much. So, why don't we switch back to silver arrows and our glass mace. Press the space-time key and try to slip by these contraptions. Of course. Well, this is interesting. Hmm. The boots of spring Jack might... Well, I don't know. All right, let's see here. So, in order not to, well, crush everyone under my magnificence, let's, instead of the mage fighter's greaves, all right, this may be too much for everyone to bear, but please do your best. The robe of glib tongues, fortifying personality by eight points. Well, at least there's no one in the immediate vicinity in this dungeon to be harmed. Now we switch into the boots of a spring heel jack. And up we go. Outstanding. All right, and here are my dwarven arrows. Pressing the space-time key once more, let us trigger the block and move on. We move so much more quickly in our simple robe and yes, they are heated up and ready to cast. And what do you do, alternative block? I am not sure. Well, hopefully I didn't just close something. Although I imagine it's not at all impossible for us to get back here. Pressing the space-time key either way no, it looks as if the portal is open. So in that case, we will switch back to our shrouded armor, back into sneaky mode, and down we go to the stone doors to the Hall of Epochs. You may hear a bit of crunching in the background. One of Chekka's the human's furry companions is having a bit to eat. She just came back from her latest, oh, how do you say it? Chemotherapy, is it? And uh, she's doing a bit better, but very hungry now. All right, anyway, I digress. And well, we have a ghost that needs to die yet again. So. Didi, if you'd be so kind, darling, and I would be so kind as to help myself to these welkined stones. Not going to step on that pedestal. Don't quite trust it. Well done, darling. One hit. Wonder. And uh, checking the ghost for some ectoplasm, we press the space-time key and move deeper. More magical turrets. Not as yet interested in our presence. More Welkin stones, one on the ground, two there, three, four total that I can see. Let's ask Didi to be a deer and deal with that ghost. 
and we will slip over here. Dee Dee Darling, you are just magnificent today. Another Welkind stone. How are we doing on weight? 404 out of 420. Coming up the stairs just a bit to grab the stone. Once more. And finally another. These each granting us, well, quite a bit of magicka. Ectoplasm, now 407 out of 420. Hmm. Quick look around. I hear something, perhaps the rattling of bones, or the groaning of a zombie. Well. The ultimate heist. There must be some secret way to open this door. I'll bet this is where I have to use the arrow of extrication. Most likely, I have to be standing in a special place for the keyhole to open up. It will be somewhere with a clear view of this pillar. Fascinating insight. Which pillar exactly is that? Let's assume that it thought we came up the middle and not the left. These look uncomfortably like guardians. They also look a bit like they're wearing glass armor, which I would not hesitate to deprive them of. Pressing the space-time key once more. Now, the arrow... No, I don't want to fire it. Oh. Although I wouldn't really hesitate to fire on them either. Hmm. It could actually be, well, I suppose. Well, it's not an arrow that we can shoot. All right, first thing we're going to try firing on one of these. Interesting. Did it go through? Hmm. All right. I don't suppose this will be any different, but we may as well try. Fascinating. All right. Well, we'll stay with our silver arrows. Somewhere with a line of sight of the pillar, I imagine, of course, in this, well, guarded place. These walls look like they are meant to move. Maybe the place I need to stand to fire the arrow is behind them. I'd better look for a way to get through them. All right, or at least around them. Yes, zombies inside, that for certain. I could walk over that. Not the worst idea I could have, either, actually. Let's come around here. Press the space-time key once more. Oh, hello. Not sure where that goes, but we may investigate. So it is possible, I assume, that something would lower these, but what? Would it be the guardians here would be a guess, but what what would trigger them? Firing shots into them did not work. There is the door on the other side we can pass through to see. 
love this. Always love a bit of mental exercise to go with any heist. The door is hard. Of course it is. Easy there, lockpick. There we are. And we have an Iliad coffer, lesser staff of storms, mesmerizing gasp, gold grasp, sorry, gold nugget, and a block to push. Although that sounded like it was below us. But let's take a look out here. Those appear to be in place. All right, well, let's do the most obvious thing first, which would be to just walk out there along these ledges. Yes, that does make sense. I do believe whatever we need to do is through there, but... Hmm. I miss the Nordish versions where we could... Well, I don't know, actually. I haven't tried to shoot one down, have I? Let's see. Switching back to Dwarven arrows. Let's fire on this one. No. All right. Well... Switching back to silver, just in case we run into anything more ethereal. Or ethereal. Or Daedric, for that matter. What did our block change? Speaking of ethereal... Dee Dee Darling, would you be so kind, dear? Thank you. Your help is always welcome, dear. Nice shot, ghost. You missed, but still, you know, points for effort. Enjoy your second death in that little alcove. Speaking of little alcoves, all right, let's take a moment, fire up some light, put Dee Dee back into her place in our book. Potion of Cure Poison, Strong Potion of Healing. 419 out of 20. What do we have that we might not need? Well, you know, the other choice we would have is to switch into Mage Fighter's Greaves. Curass of Pain Resistance, Dwarven Gauntlets, and Boots of the Jument, raising our weight total to 525. All right, now, Ancient Ghost has Ectoplasm. What changed this? I imagine all right, let's take another look at our map. This is quite a fascinating place. All right, well, let's follow the path and see where it leads. Most fascinating. Stone door to the Hall of Epochs. Now, the Arrow of Extrication was meant to do something with time, epochs being a portion of time, I imagine that's something possible. Well, let's give this fellow something to rattle about, and then Dee Dee something to play with. And then we will take a moment to switch back to our glass mace.
There we are, dear. Do you have fun when I play with you, darling? I hope so. All right. Bone meal, silver mace, anything special about your shield? No, not at all. All right, an Iliad cask with 34 gold. And the gate that is unlocked. Slipping through, we have several more Welkind stones. At this rate, we should take them not only valuable for their ability to gain magicka back for us, but quite literally for their value as well. So, in the pocket they go. This does not appear to be a trap, but I will still press the space-time key and spend as little time out in the open area as possible, grabbing another Welkind stone and releasing Didi upon the undead. As we switch back to... So, oh wait, we have a silver mace as well? Well, I wondered if we had anything we could drop. You know, aside from the ghost, but it dropped rather well. Ectoplasm, why not take it? Who knows when we'll need it. We'll grab the Welkinder stone. And another, let's take a quick look over here. Nothing. See you again soon, darling. Anything over here? Yes, there is a way down, but first, what do we have here? Another gate. Iliad cask has a dwarven warhammer, chainmail boots, and 20 gold. We'll take and leave the rest. Potion of dispel, strong potion of sorcery. And another Iliad cask with fire and darkness, six gold, a lockpick. Let's take a quick look at fire and darkness, just in case it's a spell we might, well, need. No, actually, our blade skill increased. Did not expect that. Taking a look, we are getting once more close to level. And here, well, we would probably just have to take it. All right, anything else, anything to activate? No, good, then we go. As well, a Khajiit friend of mine is fond of saying, more undead, how surprising. All right, Didi, deal with the headless if you would please. I will switch now to Flare, and see if I can't knock that Welkind stone out of its perch. There we go. Well, doesn't mean we'll get it, but I did hit it. Let's get Didi's page back in the book, just in case something else playful is about. Headless zombie has mort flesh. All right, then back to Flare. Let's get a little bit of spin on it this time. Got one. Hmm, not sure about that one. I suppose if we use the boots of spring -Heel Jack, but... Let's move on. Easy to reach or no? Easier. We got it. Excellent. And here we have another gate with a chest behind. Opening the gate, stepping through. Chest contains a potion of alacrity to restore speed 10 points on self and a potion of cure disease. We take both and move on. There is a skeleton switching to Dee Dee, calling her from oblivion and going to give her a bit of a hand. Hello there, sunshine.
Wonderful darling, it's always fun to play with you. Skeletal Guardian has steel and iron arrows and a bone meal, none of which I am concerned about. Well, I'd look for the bow, but let's move along. Back into sneaky mode, something has noticed us. Releasing Didi out of beyond. Oh yes, Faded Wraith Didi, darling. I would love to help a bit more. Let's see if I can. Those are rather unpleasant. Silver arrows queued up. Sneak attack. I hope that went into the Faded Wraith and not to Didi. Wonderful dear. You are exceptional as always, darling. You'll feel better once you're home, and then we'll call you back. A faded wraith has ectoplasm. We will take it and find another button to push. Pressing the space-time key, we take a look at this alcove on the right. I see a chest containing a potion of healing and a strong potion of healing turning about. There is the button and the cask, but let's check this alcove out first. I hear something. Like wind in a large hall. All right, strong potion of healing. Let's quickly check it down in this direction. Just an alcove and a way up. We may have actually come up. Yes, we did come from that way. I do get turned around occasionally. Strange as it is to say. Gold emerald ring, miner's boots, fortify athletics, eight points on self, and 173 gold, a total weight of 444. We push the block and have to wonder if we have opened something where we needed it to be. Up the stairs we go, and I suppose at that po this point we just go hunt it down. I will leave that Welkind stone up to 444 already out of 525 without using our feather spell, we are getting close on weight. And I don't know that we want to, well, have to use our concentration on feather. Did we check this? Yes, it would seem we had. Back into the Hall of Epochs. seemed for an instant as if we could use something. Anyway, let's move along. As we are, let's take a moment to cast some restoration magic, switching back to Dee Dee's page. Ah, the world is very open now. Dee Dee, darling, would you be a dear? We will, of course, do our best to provide fire support. Oh dear, I do hope that was the zombie. All right, one down. Dee Dee is losing time, so... There we are, woke the second headless up. Angling for support, not needed. Well done, darling, recovered our arrow. Checking the first headless, two silver arrows I am happy to collect. And a headless zombie with another silver arrow. Well, courtesy of us. All right, let's clear the hall 
and then we will pause here until next we meet. But for now we have one headless here, who of course is bashful, we'll fix that. And we have a skeletal archer who's firing on Didi as well. Oh, I can't believe I missed that shot. All right, darling, go after the archer and I will support as I can. Well shot, archer. Not the smartest move, perhaps. Darling, if you would be so kind. Thank you, dear. And one headless down, nothing but mort flesh. Here is a silver arrow from a miss. And another. It would be lovely if this archer had more silver arrows. Four dwarven, though. We'll take those for certain. All right. We have at least at the moment claimed this area of the hall and are still sneaking. So what we will do is pause our journey here, and when next we meet, we will try to determine what to do with the Arrow of Extrication. I would like to say thank you so much for joining Didi and I on our journey. We hope you found it entertaining and maybe even just a little bit informative. We and, of course, Checkers the Human would like to invite you to think of something you are truly grateful for, something that brings you joy just as a DD brings joy into all of our hearts. Well, and of course, well, an Altmer such as myself. Most of all, though, we would like to ask you to please, please take care. <laughs>